Recently, one of our patients was in a bad car accident. He presented to the hospital with a severe head injury. And we monitored the intracranial pressure for a while and then eventually did an MRI scan. That MRI scan showed diffuse axonal injury and really was an explanation as to why the patient was not waking up like we had hoped. Let's talk a little bit about what diffuse axonal injury is and what it means when it is diagnosed in the context of a severe head trauma. When a patient is in an accident, and it's usually a car accident, but it could be another type of accident, there could be a sudden acceleration or deceleration of the body and the head. The brain will rebound and recoil as that accident occurs. The outside of the brain versus the middle layers versus the very center of the brain and the brain stem will move at different speeds and at different rates and they'll rebound differently. So it's almost like there is a shifting or shearing force that occurs. In the context of a severe head trauma, that shearing force can actually tear or directly injure the neurons and the axons in the brain. Diffuse axonal injury is basically just a description of the injury that occurs from shear forces in a bad head trauma. The more peripheral the injury, the less severe. As you get closer and closer to the center of the brain and the brainstem, the more serious and severe the diffuse axonal injury is. So it's graded one, two, three, depending on how close to the brainstem the injury is. We don't see diffuse axonal injury very well on CT scan. So a patient could come to the hospital after a head injury and get a CT scan and really find, well, there's a little bit of blood or the CT scan is relatively normal. It's not until we get an MRI and couple that with the physical exam can we say you have a diffuse axonal injury because we see these changes on MRI scan. What is the treatment of diffuse axonal injury? There really isn't a way to directly repair the axons and the neurons that are injured from the shear forces of a severe head injury. We can provide supportive care, which would mean ventilation if the patient can't protect their airway, prevention of pneumonia, clots in the legs, and other kinds of things as complications from being in bed, providing nutritional support, usually through an NG tube, and or IV fluids. We can manage intracranial pressure because the, re the, the rising pressure inside of the head can create secondary damage. But there's no way to directly fix a diffuse axonal injury. Rehabilitation services are very important. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy would generally be involved. And there would be efforts made to encourage the brain to heal itself and to maybe rewire the brain in such a way given some plasticity that the brain has. Many patients with diffuse axonal injury never wake up. They are in a persistent vegetative state and, and or in, maybe become more responsive but have a severe disability. It's difficult to predict exactly what the prognosis is for an individual patient. Yes, we can look at their exam when they come in, we can look at their exam during the course of things, and we can also look at the severity of the diffuse axonal injury. Some patients make a miraculous recovery, others do not. And it's difficult to be able to say, your loved one is likely to never wake up, or your loved one is definitely going to make a recovery. We just don't know. The thing to do really is to provide supportive care to have an understanding of the spectrum of possibilities, and then to give the patient time to get as much healing as we can.